How's everyone doing today? Great Very good. I'm oh, doing really good. Um, so I love, I, I totally want to talk about Snakehead, but I love asking a curveball right at the beginning. So for each of you guys, um, what TV series, for the actors, what TV series would you love to guest star on? And Evan, what TV series would you love to guest write and direct? Current TV show that's ex it's on or any in history? A anything you want. Oh, okay. Well, I would, I would love to, I would have loved to guest star in different strokes next to Gary Coleman. That's, that would have been a dream or be in a movie with him. Like you ever see his movies when he's like an orphan that lives at like the, like, like, like the bus station and stuff like, I, I, you ever see that? Like, I, 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 I can't remember. I don't remember the title, but I know it's like early eighties. I just don't early remember. 80s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just don't remember the title. There was a slew of Gary Coleman films that really touched your heart. He would always play, he was like the, he was our era of Shirley Temple movies, basically. I don't, well, at least my era, right? So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway, I would Coleman love to Gary Coleman. Would, <laughs> yeah, he was, he's the only actor I've ever been starstruck. Before he passed away, I met him at a restaurant and I was stuttering when I went up to him because I grew up with watching Gary Coleman, man. That guy was like my hero, you know? Anyway, that's it. I, I'd love to be on I Love Lucy. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I Love Lucy. Yeah, I think that was that was my favorite growing up was uh, I Love Lucy. And it's just her comic sense and style and timing. It's you could learn so much. There's just volumes that I could learn from her. Um, if you think about it, Jade, there was never I, I don't think there was ever an Asian actress or actor on I Love Lucy yet. Because yeah. I've watched, I grew up watching that show too, or no, all of them. There was one. I think there was one, but I think it was a waiter in a restaurant or something like that. But I, right. th but that was it. <laughs> I think, you know, when I was starting out in the industry, I think there were only eight of us in the whole United oh. States. Oh. And there were no yeah. stories. And so everybody was scrambling for the same role. Uh, and there was never anything on, on network for us. It would have been awesome to see an Asian Cuban. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know they have the Asian Cuban food. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> and it's yeah, so for me, I guess it would be something like Games of Thrones because I like period pieces and, and fantasy and all that. Um, I think it'd be fun to play one of those characters, so one of the really mean ones, maybe. Again, another series with no Asians. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Well, no, Andira no, is, is uh, Asian. She's Asian. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, we, we got Jason Momoa too, so he's kind of Asian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of, kind of, yeah. Um, yeah, honestly, I mean, I think, I honestly wouldn't, I, I don't want, I'd love to direct a Law & Order SVU because my oh. parents, I watched all of them and my parents loved that. And I would love to be able to get something I could just talk about with my mom on that level, so. I appreciate you answering. And this is one of the reasons I like asking a question like that, because it sort of gets to know you guys without, um, you know what I mean? It lets you know a little bit about what you like and anyway. So jumping into why I actually get to talk to you guys today. Um, uh, Evan, I know you've been trying to get this movie made for a long time. Can you sort of talk about, did you ever think, shit, this is never gonna happen? Yeah, I mean, I, I, knew, I knew it was gonna happen. I just didn't know when it was gonna happen. I think, you know, I think you start off making this film I think, in 2008 and it was really just a, a trying moment. Like how, why is this so hard to get done? And, uh, you know, at the same time, like you get these little moments of success, these little moments of, of bumps and, and excitement, which, you know, the Hollywood sort of industry gives you and, uh, and, and you, you continue. And I think you just have these little moments, a little win here, a little win there, a little meeting there, another investor here. And, uh, you, you, you get you get it keeps you going and really um at the end i i knew i had to get this done because otherwise my wife was going to kill me so you know that's really uh, a, a huge driving force in my life <laughs> i hate asking the generic question but for people that haven't seen the movie yet even maybe they haven't seen the trailer yet um how have you been describing the film uh, i'm not sure who wants to, to Evan, I don't know if you want to I'll give you a quick one, quick one, la la la. I mean, to, to, for me, it, 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 it's Scarface, uh, but instead of a Cuban man, it's a Chinese woman, and instead of smuggling cocaine into the country, she's smuggling people. 
Um, and so, you know, this movie is made in this in 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 that in that realm. I mean, I grew up in America, and you know, I grew up in the '80s. I love Scarface, Godfather, Goodfellas, and you know, this is kind of like you know an iteration of, of that sort of world of the American gangster. Uh, for the cast, um, I'm curious, what was it about the script and story that said, uh, "I I have to do this. I want to do this." Well, there's not many female, strong female characters in Hollywood to start with, but for Asian American or Asian, Asian male even, you know, there's not many characters like this. So for me, as a female Asian actress, I was like, oh my God, this is such a meaty character. It has so much you can work with. Uh, I was blown away when I read the script. That's basically what it was. Yeah, and the, it's, uh, you know, how many uh, older Asian American women lead roles are there? there none, um, you know, and very few. We have it in different ethnicities coming before, but how could any actor turn down Daima? You know, I, I, I just can't even imagine any actor turning that down. Um, I was able to, you know, live with this story and the script since you know Evan came up with it years ago so you know the the opportunity to be able to work with an old friend on his first you know feature was definitely you know a, a highlight and you know attractive for me and and that's where you know that 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 relationship gave us the ability to you know, create a character from ground up and on paper character like Rambo could be so one dimensional but you know it gave us the opportunity to really you know, develop something with the real estate we had. So really I cool. love learning about the behind the scenes of the making of any project. So for you guys, what do you think might surprise people to learn about the making of Snakehead? I mean, it was made all on no money, basically, this movie. And uh, what surprised me the most was the community. Our Asian community just showed up uh, basically working for free, just for food, you know, and, and wanted to make this movie happen. Everyone was just so passionate about it, you know, in the crew and outside of it. Everyone was just so excited. And that actually surprised me so much. It's so much, so many people showed up for the movie. Like, I was amazed. Yeah, obviously the community was totally there for us. Um, I mean, actually from a real interesting standpoint, we had this huge boat scene as a climax um, point in this film that you know it, we got this free boat and we got 100 extras in florida and you know we needed them to be asian there's not that many chinese people in florida so we had to get from you know senior citizens to young kids to play the extras and um you know it was this massive boat scene with this big climax and guns and action and i mean we had to take it out of the movie it didn't work for the story and you know that was you know, one of the, you know, obviously you hear about killing your darlings and killing your biggest scene. And, and, and we literally had to do the hardest scene had to take out of this film. And, um, you know, I, I think it, 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 it's, it, it was a learning lesson. It was a big lesson for me. And also, you know, this movie is so ambitious and, you know, you get to realize like what story are you trying to tell and what's important. And that's one of the bigger lessons I've learned. Um, yeah, it's the, the like what Suya said and, and, and uh, Evan about the community, because, it comes from the leader um, and what Evan did was he created a world. It wasn't just a community, it was a world because this was shot internationally. It was shot domestically in different locations and everywhere he went, he was able to draw the passion for the film and the story. Um, and that was a surprise because making an indie film is so hard anyway but to be able to go to these foreign locations and have everyone come to four is, is really surprising because I've made a few indie films and it's not that easy to do. And he created a miracle. One of the things that I thought was very well done about the film, one of the many things is that you're portraying a story on screen that often isn't depicted. And um, it's another side of New York City that, you know, there's not a lot of limelight on it. Um, can you sort of talk about what, why this story was important to you to, you know, get told and put on the screen? Yeah, I mean, New York Chinatown is 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 a wonderful, um, fantastic sort of place, right? And 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 um, I really wanted to make sure that New York Chinatown was a character in this film, right? And I think it it, it represents something that uh, I get to see. And so you always have this world that these characters living in, and this is sort of like an an underwater sort of world of 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 just um 
fantastic sort of experiences, you know, and, and, and beauty in the, in, in the underworld. And so for me, um, New York Chinatown and, and, and telling that story was something I never got to see told from our perspective. And that was really what was important for us to do. Uh, for the actors, you guys all get to essentially be badasses in your own way. Uh, how much fun is it playing a role like that where you are the badass? Oh, it's so much fun. I mean, again, this is such a meaty role, right? Not only is this to see a, a very strong character, but there's also a lot of pain underneath and, and she's very vulnerable and she cannot show that because she has to be smart in what she does, every move she does, you know? It's all for sacrifice of her daughter, of her family. She's just trying to protect that and try to get to her. So uh, again, I was in Candyland to be able to play a role like that. <laughs> Yeah, I think with badass roles, there it, it comes with a certain degree of power. And with power, what people don't see is a responsibility for that power. How do you accept that responsibility? How do you manifest it? Um, and I think that dimension that uh, in the story to, is able to flesh out characters that you wouldn't normally see. Oh, yeah. Playing, the playing a baddie is always fun, you know, and... Getting to do the research is is an, it's even more fun because you get to go and meet former or current people that you know live in this world. So we had the luxury; we had a lot of great consultants in the community that came out and shared their stories. So you know, to be a sponge and to be able to listen to the history and you know, some of it is a little inflated, and you know, the the stories can be a little you know like overly dramatic at times. But it's it's fun to be a fly on the wall and listen to that history and then being able to you know hopefully bring that to life in a in a human like relatable way um it's 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 super cool you know it's and when there's a little you know hot sauce on it and when you know when there's a little touch of of, of of badness or evil to it it makes it that much much more interesting right? and that's also so, very human i mean we all have those sides we just don't absolutely. see absolutely it. it's like a family yeah. you know behind the closed doors of a house you know, you see the dynamic of the actual family members and, and that you so rarely see in films. You only see the surface and that with Chinatown too, you only see as a tourist, you see Chinatown in Manhattan, you know, going there to eat Chinese food, um, but you don't see the underbelly of it. You guys, I would imagine getting ready to make this movie, or I'm guessing that you probably did a little bit of research in terms of the story you're depicting. And, you know, um, was there anything for each of you that you guys learned that you were really surprised by? You know, I was surprised well, about... Nate, well, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. The, yeah, there's just a, a, a natural, organic, I guess, hierarchy to, you know, this world. And, um, you know, the character that Daima was, like, represented, you know, the people that we met actually knew her at one point and you know it wasn't this like like you know story of this crazy maniacal lady you know she was almost like a like the city mayor you know there was she was well respected she was you know there was this this level of esteem and um i guess you know contribution from her and you know most of the time when you hear about like you know like criminals within, you know, a community like Chinatown, it's so one-dimensional, you know, they're just evil and they just did it for money and greed. But then you realize that most of this stuff was necessity, you know, and she was actually, and the community and a lot of people under, in this like underbelly of crime in, in Chinatown and, and men, many ethnic communities, you know, it's, it's a matter of necessity and there is such a human side and, and, and a level of like respect with these individuals, which you know, caught me by surprise because I went in there with this own prejudice and going, oh, these are criminals and they do bad things and all they care about is money. But then it's not, you know, they're, 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 they're mothers and their sisters and their daughters. And, you know, there is this really human side to them that, you know, I think that's what I think this whole story and this exploration of these characters are. And that's where it goes back to the responsibility of power. You know, Daima takes on this position because no, no one else will do it. And, you know, I think, you know, that it, it's she has this obligation and the community that she created 
that brought she brought over to the country um you know they're obligated back to her so that's uh, is it respect is it obligation is it just um it's not just money that people are owing you know they're owing their lives they would not have this life in america had she not brought them over oh well uh they've given me the signal about uh time i'm just going to say that i've spoken to a number of people about uh independent movies and how challenging they are to make and to get off the ground and i really say uh, congratulations on finally getting this film made, Evan. And you guys all did such a great job. Uh, I look forward to promoting it on Collider. Uh, as you guys know, we did the trailer. Um, so um, thank you. Thank you for giving me your time and I wish you nothing but the best.